Yes, these two pieces can be combined into one. The rope wrapped around the ceiling fan is what caused it to break. The question now is why there was a rope around it in the first place. Something missing that should be here. If the puncture wound in the abdomen is the true cause of death, right, there should be blood stains in a hole where the screwdriver went through his clothing. Yes, these pieces of information can tell us something. According to Mr. Taylor's friend, on the day of the incident, Dennis had been wearing... That's right. He was supposedly wearing a red Portland Jacks t-shirt that day. But when his body was discovered, it was wearing... Yes. His corpse was found wearing a white shirt. In other words, his clothing had changed. And yet, if that was all we know, we couldn't rule out if the deceased had changed his shirt himself. However, if he had, there would still be a discrepancy. Yes. The corpse had a wound that wasn't reflected by the state of the clothing it was wearing. There's only one answer to this puzzle, and that is... Indeed. Whoever had killed Mr. Taylor replaced the shirt he was wearing after killing him. The reason for doing that was... Exactly. It was probably to hide the stab wound and make us believe the cut wrist was the cause of death. The killer staged the suicide in order to mislead us. These two are related. There are no vital reactions to the broken finger. That means the damage occurred after death. Considering that the killer must have changed the victim's clothing after death, that's right. 
The killer broke the corpse's finger while changing the shirt on the body. Yes, these two can tell us how the murder happened. On the day of the incident, the killer came to the victim's room and stabbed him in the torso. The murder weapon was... Yes, the screwdriver pierced the victim's lung, causing pulmonary emphysema. This caused respiratory problems due to lung failure. Thus, the cause of death was... After this, the killer moved the victim to the bed. This is most likely because... Indeed, the murderer then arranged the corpse to make the death appear to be a suicide. That is what I believe took place, according to the evidence we have gathered. The fire began near the fallen table. Calcium hydroxide was found in the substance on the floor there. Calcium hydroxide is formed through the reaction of quicklime and water. That reaction creates something else as well. Yes, quicklime releases 65 kilojoules of energy per mole when it reacts with water. This was the method used to start the fire in this room. First, you would place a glass of water on the table. You would also put quicklime around the floor and on the table near the glass. When the table falls over, the hydration heat caused by the reaction would cause a fire. But why would the killer go through such a complicated plan to start a fire? That's right. If all he wanted was a fire, he could have just set something on fire. The killer needed to have a delay until the fire began. That's why he devised a plan that made use of two components. Yes, this trick relied on the ceiling fan and a rope. The killer wrapped one end of the rope around the fan and tied the other to a table. 